Rachel Besser and I've got a Diabetes UK Clinical Training Fellowship and um, that's in the University of Exeter at the Peninsula Medical School and at Professor Andrew Hattersley and a diabetes group. I'm a paediatrician so I'm a specialist paediatric registrar and I've interrupted my training to do research in uh, young onset diabetes. So the research is using a simple urine test, a one-off urine test to measure whether young people with diabetes are producing their own insulin. And what the urine test measures is urine C-peptide. Now when insulin is produced from the pancreas, um, it's also um, produced with C-peptide in equal amounts. And the insulin lowers the blood glucose and the C-peptide, there's some debate what it does. But if it's there, the important thing is if C-peptide is present, it implies that someone's producing their own insulin. Now there are lots of problems with uh, measuring blood levels and you can measure C-peptide in the blood but actually lots of people don't do it. It's invasive, in other words involves a blood test, involves the patient coming into hospital and uh, it can't be done at home. So we thought maybe more people would measure someone's own insulin production if we developed a simple urine test that could be done at home. And so that's what we've done and we measure C-peptide in the urine and we compare it to something called creatinine, which is a measure of kidney function, so that it doesn't make any difference how hydrated you, you are or not. Measuring the creatinine against the C-peptide gives you a good estimate of how much insulin someone's making. So one of the key things we've been doing at the moment is seeing whether we can use this simple urine test, which measures urine C-peptide, to help identify patients who have this, more, this uh, rare genetic type of diabetes and not type 1. Now why is that important? It's important because patients with this particular monogenic type of diabetes, and we call it HNF, 1 alpha and 4 alpha, MODI, which means maturity onset diabetes of the young, Patients um, are very sensitive to tablets, a particular type of tablets are called sulfonylureas. And studies have shown that once, that first of all, patients are frequently misdiagnosed from up to 90% of times. And for those who are misdiagnosed from type 1 diabetes, in up to 80%, they can be taken off their insulin and be put on tablets. And that, that's really important. First of all, for patients who've been misdiagnosed, and getting the treatment right. They're often sensitive to low doses of sulfonylurea tablets. No two days are the same. Some days I'm um, contacting patients to either uh, explain what the study's about, or sometimes they come in, or we send them out urine containers. Other days I'm, I'm gathering together the results and I'm using statistical software to try and work out where the importance of the test lies. Other times I'm giving presentations and I'm taking the work that we've done, I've taken already to Diabetes UK this year and last year when I began my fellowship to um, uh, Innsbruck in Austria to a pancreatic transplant meeting. We're lucky to win a, a prize. And um, so sharing the information amongst the diabetes community is very important. What's really important is that um, Professor Hattersley runs a, a um, very clever multidisciplinary team. So I work with a statistician, um, a research midwife, a senior biochemist, research nurses and other research doctors. So I've, I've presented twice, two posters and two oral presentations and the key one was uh, what I was describing earlier was using a, the urine test which measures the peptide to see if it can dis identify MODI so the monogenic diabetes for people with type 1 diabetes. So that was very exciting. So we, everyone who took part, they were all adults, uh, they had diabetes for five years or more. So in theory, if they had type 1 diabetes, they shouldn't really be producing any of their own urine, uh, insulin. But actually we expected maybe one or two patients. And we found that actually this urine test was very good at discriminating MODI from type 1 diabetes. And... Um, we know that if you have someone who is diagnosed less than 30 um, in front of you who you think has got type 1 diabetes, the chance of them, ha of them having this rare type of diabetes is about 0.6%, so less than 1 in 100, so not very high. But if you do this test and they produce quite a bit of their own insulin after five years of having diabetes, actually that likely
likelihood goes up and maybe makes you think, is it worthwhile to do a genetic test? On the other hand, if it's undetectable, probably the diagnosis of type 1 is right, even if there are other things that might make the doctor or nurse think this isn't type 1 diabetes. Well, um, in two areas, from the research we've done already in identifying patients who don't have type 1 diabetes and who actually have monogenic diabetes and could therefore probably stop their insulin and be treated with tablets. And then if that person is affected, it has implications. Often they have other family members with diabetes, allows us to test the other family members and offer predictive testing for the children. I think that this um, urine C peptide test is going to be very useful. And patients, from my experience, are really interested to know if they're producing their own insulin. And often patients will tell me that there doesn't seem to be a logical reason one day to the next about uh, their blood sugars. And of course, the blood sugar level is affected by lots of different things, by what you eat, your hormones, puberty, uh, exercise, and of course, your pancreatic function. Now, if we could measure easily pancreatic function through urine T-peptide, and we, that would be an extra tool in the armory to be able to inform patients about what's happening without the support from generous individuals we couldn't be doing this research so um, some of the money that's been funded has paid for my salary and also research costs to be able to measure uh, urine C peptide and I just want to say thank you very much because it's a great uh, privilege to be involved in diabetes research it's an area close to my heart on a personal and professional front and so I just want to say thank you to all the supporters because this is a very exciting area of research and I'm very lucky to be involved in the diabetes story.